And this is Henry Fonda. Tonight's cavalcade story is about a man, a mound of earth, and an idea. The idea was oil. What happens when fate and the two together, the man, the mound, the idea, adds up to one of the most thrilling moments in the story of our... Eighteen ninety-five. Place, the home of Joseph Jefferson, the famous American actor, on Coat Carlin, an island in the Cajun country, the Delta region of Louisiana. Patsy? Oh, Mr. Jefferson, you know. Last to see the room, he was sitting under an umbrella just around that head. Glasses paid on canvas and cussing like a mule driver with a misery. Bad mood, eh? <laughs> it was biting back at the mosquito. <laughs> What's our depth? It's about uh, 2,010 feet. Was this the last sample you took up? That's right. We're about the 2,000 foot level. Smell it? Yep. Fine grade of skunk water. Ah, that's it, my boy. Your trouble is you can't see further than your nose can smell. I'm going to see you to Jefferson. I smell as far as any man, and further than most. You're right, Patsy, farther than the host, and with reason, too. Hello there, Mr. Jefferson. Oh, so there you are, Lucas. Uh-huh. Painting, I see. Well, what's this supposed to be? It's supposed to be a landscape. Ah, that's right. That's a tree there, isn't it? Mmm, no. Yeah, sure, it's a tree. But... It would look more like a tree if that damnable derrick of yours wasn't in the way. You have to have a derrick to dig a well. But it throws the whole composition out of pewter. I see what you mean. But you asked him to come down here and put down a chest well for salt. And what have you found? Salt? Watch your sample. Here, smell this. Oh, what is it? Salt? Garnished with oil. Not a dish for my salad. Oh, wait with it. Mr. Jefferson, I think there's oil on your property. But I'm not interested in oil. Lucas, I'm sorry I even started this. I never intended to make my estate into a, a machine shop. Uh, I'm sorry, Lucas, but you'll have to stop and immediately. You're set on that? I am. Ring down the curtain. Exactly. The show is just starting. Hold it down right now. Well, it's your property, Mr. Jefferson, but I think you're making a mistake. I don't. All right. Patsy. Yes? Patsy, stop the drill. Cut it off. Stop the drill. Cut it off. I'll have the rigging down by tomorrow. Good. Good. Well, and what are your plans now? I'm going west. California? No, Texas. I found an underground mountain of salt here on your land, Mr. Jefferson, and I found traces of oil. Everywhere I put down a well hereabouts, I found the same thing, salt and oil. Uh, and it follows a pattern, a line that points west, points like an arrow to Texas. Sounds like a wild idea. Maybe it is, but I'm going to follow through on it. I'm sending east for my family, my wife and son. I'll have them meet me in Beaumont. You're letting yourself in for a lot of trouble, Captain Lucas, just to follow through on a wild idea. <laughs> I can't figure out why you're doing it. It's not hard to figure out, really. Why do you keep the children to the stage season after season? You're a rich man. Oh, right? that's different. The stage, the smell of grease paint, it's in my blood. With me, sir, it's the smell of oil. It's in my blood. <laughs> Like it, Carolyn? Oh, it looks like a wonderful house, dear. I'm dying to see the inside. <laughs> no Indian. <laughs> uh, we'll dig some up for you tomorrow, Tony. Come along. You like it? Well, yes, it's nice, but it's empty. Where's the furniture? That'll come. I needed the cash. I had the supplies of the digging. Anyway, I want you to pick it out yourself. Meantime, I've got some packing cases we can use for tables and chairs. And, and... plenty of wide-open spaces. Well, I suppose wide-open spaces is exactly what one has to expect in Texas. Oh, it's good to be here, Anthony. It's good to be here with you. <laughs> Oh, it's nice out here. 
The moon goes big in Texas. Be even nice if we had some chairs to sit on. What's the matter with sitting on the porch steps? Good old American custom. You mean it wouldn't be patriotic to use cushions even? Oh, shy. Caroline. Hmm? You know it's a gamble, don't you? What's a gamble, Anthony? The cool thing, this whole idea of mine, is you can find oil by finding salt domes. There's no proof. But you have found some oil. You wrote me you did. Just traces. Not enough to keep your sewing machine going. But enough to get me started on one of the wildest ideas a man ever had. I suppose it's the time. The whole world is spinning around on wheels these days, and it's going to need oil. Millions of barrels of oil to keep it going. Well, I thought there was plenty of oil in Pennsylvania and West Virginia. No, well, near enough. New fields have to be opened. New supplies of oil have to be found. And there's only one thing that's going to find them. Plants. The old days of drill and pray are over. It's going to be geology now that finds oil, and engineering that'll bring it up. Mm, that sounds sensitive. Probably is not many others agree with me. Matter of fact, hereabouts, your loving husband has been building up quite a reputation as a local crust pot. Yeah? That's right. Lots of people think my idea of finding oil by locating salt domes is a mild form of insanity. Well, I don't care what they think, Anthony. It doesn't matter, but... Well, there is this. You've built up a wonderful reputation as an engineer. We can always get along fine. We don't need oil wells to be happy. We don't need the money. It isn't the money. It's the idea. Either I'm right and the others are wrong, or they're right and I turn out to be the village idiot. Well, Anthony, what are you doing about it? For one thing, I'm going to see a chap of the improbable name of Patillo Higgins tomorrow. Hmm? He has a piece of property I've heard about, and I want to investigate it. And if I get it, I start drilling. With me? With you? One hundred percent. Oh. Howdy. I'm looking for Patillo Higgins. That would be me. My name is Lucas, Captain Anthony Lucas. Glad to know you. What and have a stoker. Thank you. You have some property to sell? If there's a man fool enough to buy it, I've got it to sell. I'm interested. Why? Oil. Oil? Now, now, look ahead, mister. You just listen to me. Get over that chair and walk to the door, climb it behind you, and take the next train out of Beaumont. I'm warning you for your own good. Well, I'm talking from experience. You're not a very good salesman, Higgins. I'm an honest man, mister. Years ago, I got the idea that there'd be oil hereabouts. First place I decided to drill was on a mound that folks around here called Spinner Top. You ever hear of it? Yes, I have. I wish I never had. Ever since I had in the world, I sunk in that hole. This everlasting red cent. First, we couldn't get enough water to flush out the grills. Then the floods come when we had too much water. Then the windstorm blowed down the derrick. Then we hit quicksand at the 40-foot level and couldn't get it to circulate even with three pumps blasting away. That trouble I'm talking about, brother. I can see that. You think that? You think that's all? Uh, you just think some more. At 60-foot level, we hit a gas pocket, and the gas was all over the place. Well, sir, a wild Irishman of a roustabout decided to light a match. He picked the Irishman up in the next county. Bless my rigging. For all I know, it's still sailing. Now, you want to buy it, Lucas, or be a singing man and wise? What will you take for your interest? Frankly, I'll take what I can get. I'll give you a 10% interest in the lease. Done. I'll move my bill over to the property tomorrow. That's okay, Lucas, but listen to me, son. It'll break you. It'll smash you into little pieces. You hear that? Spin on top will break you just like it broke me and all the others. Why, man, now, that thing ain't just a mound. It's a nasty, hungry devil. It eats up our kind. Oh, I, I, I tell you, 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 you're walking into a trap, Lucas. Spinner top will break you, you mark my word. 
It'll crush you the way that, that I crushed this stogie. Just like this. Oh, uh, you've ruined your cigar, Mr. Higgins. Here, try one of mine. I'm right. 
And I tell you, you're wrong. And now, sir, I'd appreciate your taking me back to my hotel. I need a bath. That's real interesting. One man I spoke to said he'd sooner bet on a mule having pups than put a ten-cent piece in a spindle top. <laughs> By golly, that sells me. I'll back you. How far? Till a mule has pups, if need be. But uh, understand, Lucas, if we take the risks, we take our share of the profits. Agreed. It's not the money that's important to me now, Mr. Guffey. It's never been the real thing. It's just the idea, the chance to prove it to myself and some others. Tell you what I'll do. I'll get off a wire to Corsicana. Know of the Hamel boys out there? No, can't say I do. Best drillers in the business. I'll have them haul the biggest drill they've got to spindle top and bring a prize crew along with it. Now, you'll need supplies. Drillers can't eat pipe. I'll write you a blank check. How's that? Wonderful. Yep. And if spindle top comes in, that'll be even more wonderful. <laughs> Captain Lucas. I don't like the sound of that drill. Don't like it myself. She's rearing like a year old bronch. Have you been able to log anything at all? Oh, not much. Every time we have to stop the pump to put in another length of pipe, gas pressure from below mokes up the hole and we lose whatever we've drilled. Past two days, we show minus 40 feet. Stop drilling. What? Stop the drill. It's no use going on this way. Either we find a way to control that gas pressure or we give up. I don't like giving up. I don't like it either, Alva. I'm not wasting money, especially when it isn't mine. Would you like a bun with your tea, Anthony? Might be nice. Look, Daddy. Mommy put this kettle today. It whistles. Listen, <laughs> just shows you, you spend money on toys and they pay no attention to them. Buy a little tea kettle that whistles and they stand for hours watching it. When you put your finger on the hole, it stops, like this. Careful, Tony, you'll burn your fingers. It's not so hot. Do as your mommy says, Tony. Well, oh, it doesn't burn. I, uh, heard in town that you stopped drilling. Yes. I saw some furniture in Bradley's that was so... What are you doing with that kettle? My lord, it's bad enough that Tony keeps playing with it. Stops the steam coming out when I do this. Take my finger off, it starts again. A valve. A check valve. What in the world? Well, I never mind my dinner. I'll grab a bite out of the well. <laughs> Captain Lucas, that's the darndest looking contraption. <laughs> I hope it'll work. <laughs> it does look funny, though. <laughs> Made it out of an old pine box and some rubber sheeting. Well, it's clever, sure enough. And the idea of using the check valve, well, that may be okay, but uh, 
That there thing will never hold. Why not? The pressure coming up will slam the door of the valve shut like this. It'll keep the bore clear of sand and gas. Uh, maybe, but I doubt it. Fix it in between the couplings of the casings. Try it out. Well, this is it. We'll find out now. Stop the pump. We got another length of pipe in a hurry. Doctor, another length of pipe, Joe. Hear that mutter? Gas pressure. Valve will hold. Yeah, maybe. Okay, pipe set. Start pumping. Now throw her in. Let it dig. Hey, sweet, she's thick and sweet. That check valve works. By golly, like I said, it would have worked. Hey, Kurt. Yeah, Al. Where's Captain Luke? Seen him this morning? Yeah, he was out early. He went into town to fetch the new fishtail drill that comes down from Port. Hey, what's that? I don't know. She's blowing. Kurt, get down off that rig. Get down, Kurt, get down. Six foot of mud over everything. Well, I suppose you ought to try and clean up this mess. Hey, let's get out of here. Here she comes again. Come on, Al. That mud will drown you. Al! Al! Kurt, come in. Get to a telephone. Get that look. Great jumping horn coat. This thing ain't spot mud. It's spot oil. Can, Mr. Campbell. Yes, sir, Captain Lucas. I'll just pardon me. Yes. Yes, he's here. Wait a minute. For you, Captain Lucas. Thank you. Hello. This is Captain Lucas. Wait a minute, Kurt. Don't shout so I can't make out what you're saying. What? When? Yes. Yes, I'll be there right away. Something wrong, Captain. Spindle top, she's blown her head. Al! Al, it's oil. Oil it is, Captain. Smell it. Taste it. A million years of power blasting out of the earth. Look at it, Caroline. We worked for it. We fought for it. It's a gusher. Let it pour. Spindle top. The pioneer well that tapped the tremendous petroleum resources of the Texas Gulf region has since produced over 130 million barrels of crude oil. Oil for America's machines, automobiles, and homes. And today, with more than half a hundred producing wells in the spindle top fields, with modern oil scientists constantly locating new underground reserves beneath the United States, Nearly 27 billion barrels ready to be tapped for a thousand and one uses. The men of oil continue to find it faster than we can use it. These are the accomplishments of an industry this year celebrating its 90th anniversary. 
that grew because it was free to grow. Drillers in the fields, pipeline engineers, scientists, tanker men at sea, investors, gas station attendants, and refiners. The men of oil, who tonight turn their thoughts back with us to the dawn of the 20th century and a man working with a crude rattle trap drill atop a salt dome in the hot Texas sun. A pioneer of American oil, Anthony Lucas, driller of Spindletop. <laughs> Cavalcade presents one of Hollywood's loveliest stars, Jean Tierney, in a dramatic story of courage and hope, The Wall of Silence. It's a true story of a gallant young woman who, afflicted with deafness, refused to admit defeat. Be sure to listen next week to Cavalcade and our star, Jean Tierney. Tonight's Cavalcade play, Spindletop, was written by Irv Tunick and was directed by John Zoller. The music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Voorhees. Featured in the cast were Gertrude Warner as Caroline, Malcolm Keene as Joseph Jefferson, and Larry Haynes as Al Hamill. Your narrator was Ted Pearson. Our star, Henry Fonda, is appearing in the current Broadway success, Mr. Roberts. Cavalcade of America comes to you from the stage of the Belasco Theater in New York and is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Stay tuned for the Baby Snook Show on NBC. Mm -hmm.